Hey Tooled friends, welcome back to Shadow Day! It's been kind of an alternating type situation with the Honda Shadow and the Road King because of the cold weather. But, kind of caught a day where it's in the mid 40s right now. Figured I would just ride to work and catch a video for all of you. Today we're going to talk about when to winterize or how to winterize a motorcycle. So that's today's topic. When to winterize, how to winterize, do you winterize, all of the above. <laughs> so with the onset of cold weather in the northern states, many riders, I think 50 degrees is kind of their little mark of like, hey, uh, you know, it's 50 out. I think I am gonna just put the bike away for the year. So with parking the motorcycle for three, four, five, maybe even six months, there is a lot of different topics when it comes to winterizing and what to do for winterizing. So I think many people will put their motorcycle, if it's in a heated storage, they will fill the fluid, put some fuel stabilizer in that keeps very little air in the tank so you don't get rust in the tank. They'll change the oil and all those fluids to get the contaminants out so they don't sit in the bike all winter long. And then put the battery on a battery tender. Others, if it's in cold storage, you gotta pull the battery out, take the battery in the house. Don't set the battery on the concrete. Be sure you have like a wood block or something in between while you're charging. That way your battery doesn't get killed by sitting on the ground. Anyways, that's what I've always learned. And then you gotta do all that same stuff. Now those of you that are down south and ride year round, I'm sure you are just kind of changing your fluids as needed. You know, every so many miles you're you're changing. Depending on what kind of oil you run, maybe you're maybe you're going like 2,000 miles, maybe you're going five. When I had the fluids changed on my 2019 Road King Special, they told me that I would be good until the 5,000 mile mark. That was my 1,000 mile service that I did, so that I used a synthetic oil. So there's tire maintenance as well. Just want to make sure your tires are properly inflated. I see a lot of people putting cardboard underneath the tires or a piece of carpet just to keep from, you know, the moisture coming up through the concrete. And it's not a bad idea to rotate your, your uh, wheel from time to time as well. Maybe roll the motorcycle around in your storage if you can so you don't have it sitting on one spot for so long. Sometimes tires can tend to get a little bit of a flat spot due to that. Now I, on the other hand, have none of that really that I worry about. So I try to ride as much as I can all year long. And this might sound kind of kind of foolish, maybe it sounds a bit backwards. But I don't winterize. I mean, I do to a certain extent. Now that it's getting colder, I will turn the heater on in the garage. 
I think I usually keep that set at about 50. The garage is staying in the 60s right now, so I haven't had to flip it on. I will put the motorcycles on a battery tender, being that they're only getting ridden maybe once a week, once every couple weeks, that type of thing. You know, if I'm alternating videos and I'm trying to ride, one motorcycle might go two weeks before I ride, so I try to keep that in mind. And that's where the battery tender just comes in handy. I try to keep the fuel filled up as much as I can, keep it fresh. Just don't want things getting gummed up, but I'm not really a winterizer. Criticize me if you want, but yes, northern climate, most people winterize, but if I get a day that's 40 degrees in December or January, I'm going to get out on the motorcycle and go for a ride if the roads are dry or clear of ice and snow. It's usually the problem is I can't get out of the neighborhood because of the trees and they, they make the shade and then there's ice and I just, yeah, it's just not, <laughs> it's just not an ideal situation then. If you have a water-cooled motorcycle such as this and you are putting it in cold storage you will want to check your antifreeze level make sure that your antifreeze can get down to a certain temp of whatever climate you're in you know whether that's 10 below 20 below 30 below just want to make sure you don't just have water in it and let everything freeze because you are going to have a disaster come springtime. That's why I keep my motorcycles in the heated storage and then I don't really have to mess around with it. So I know I've said this in the past but there's a lot of you here from then or since then is I am not really a fair weather rider. I, I try not to ride in the rain if I can, but I have ridden in the rain. Sometimes it just happens. And like today, most people would not be out riding. But here I am, out getting you guys a video. But I wanna know, what do you do? Where are you from? Let's start with that because if you're in California or you're in Florida or Texas or whatever, uh, I'm still curious what you do for your your oil change time frames. If you do kind of like what I mentioned earlier in the video. If you're in the northern states, let me know what you do. In comparison, maybe you can give some tips in the comments down below for anybody who is looking to winterize their motorcycle for the first time and thought that they might get a few more helpful tips than what I just kind of gave. I just kind of gave some, some few things that you want to do. You know, maybe you want to put your motorcycle up on a lift and just get the wheels up off the ground. So then you don't have to worry about the moisture in the rubber. Oh, put my pant leg down, or put my leg down, my pant leg caught on the, the peg. Fingertips are a little cooled. It's supposed to be a little warmer on my ride home. Face shield's fogging up. I either need to get the pin lock insert or put something on the inside to keep this from fogging. But I think that's kind of the main tips that I can give to wheeled friends. Like I said, if you are an experienced rider, you're used to winterizing year after year, what do you do? You know, it might be something where in the springtime I would change some fluids but I just had all the fluids changed on this so technically we should be good this blinker
Anchor. So if you are new to the channel and like watching motorcycle related content, be sure to go down there, click that subscribe button, ring the bell for future uploads and activity. Give this video a big thumbs up, it helps the YouTube algorithm immensely. You have no idea how much that it helps the algorithm. When you thumbs up videos, it says, hey, this is worth watching. We're gonna recommend it to other motorcycle cravers, people who want to watch motorcycle content. And I don't know how many of you actually make it to the end anyways. Kind of taking the long way around to work. But yeah, do all that, uh, you know, all that stuff I just mentioned. And then come back next week. And we will talk a little bit more. Until next time, peace out two-wheeled friends. And we will see you later. Bye-bye.